because elements exist in different isotopic forms, and those isotopes contain different numbers of neutrons, each isotope has a different mass. For example, gallium exists in two isotopic forms. One has a mass of just under 69 AMUs, and the other has a mass just under 71 AMU, where AMU stands for atomic mass unit. The two isotopes of gallium are not equally likely. In a natural sample of gallium, 60% of gallium is the light version, and about 40% is the heavier version. So next we want to calculate the average mass of one gallium atom, which is called the atomic mass. And this average is not just an average of the two masses, because you have to account for the percent abundance of each. And when you do that, you're calculating a weighted average. And the weighted average is given by the sum of the fractional abundance, the fractional chance of selecting one of these two isotopes, times the weight of each one of those isotopes. So for example, for gallium, 60.11%, we can turn that into a fraction by dividing by 100, and then we multiply by its weight, 68.9256 atomic mass units. Doing the same thing for the second isotope of gallium gives us this second part of the sum. Each component, when you add them together, is going to give you 41.43 plus 28.29. Add those together and you get 69.723 atomic mass units. Notice the larger percentage abundance gives you a greater contribution to the overall total. If an isotope is very prevalent in the natural sample, that isotope is going to make the biggest contribution to the average mass or the atomic mass. Also, that 69.723 number is on the periodic table. When you look at gallium on the periodic table, there are two numbers. The top number in this picture is the atomic number, that's the number of protons, and then the bottom number is the atomic mass. So by looking at the periodic table, you can calculate what that average, what that weighted average is for all of the isotopes.